India's grain output is less than half of China's. Why does China need to import a large amount of grain, but India can export a large amount? In this video, let us learn more about it. The populations of India and China are both around 1.4 billion, but compared with their respective food outputs, India is even less than half of China's. But while India is exporting large amounts of food year after year, China is importing large amounts of food. What's going on? With the same population of 1.4 billion, why can India export food to the world, but China has to buy food everywhere? In 2022, India's grain production will be approximately 324 million tons. Among them, the export volume of rice alone reached 22.26 million tons, exceeding the total exports of the four major exporting countries, Thailand, Vietnam, Pakistan, and the United States. But strangely, in the Global Hunger Index ranking, India scored 29.1 out of 121 countries, ranking 107th, which is a severe hunger level. Per capita grain possession is 222 kilograms, far below the international food security line of 400 kilograms. On the one hand, it is a major exporter of food in the world, but on the other hand, the domestic people do not even have enough to eat. India doesn't have enough food to eat, so why does it still export a lot of grain? The main reason is that India is a large agricultural country. About 80% of the people in the country are engaged in agricultural production, and the agricultural output value accounts for more than 30% of the gross domestic output value. However, its domestic industry and technology are relatively weak. To develop, foreign products and technologies must be introduced, and purchasing these requires a large amount of foreign exchange. India has no choice but to export food in exchange for foreign exchange. And unlike other countries that use excess grain for export in order to ensure foreign exchange, India not only tightens its belt but also includes people's rations in its import and export volume. Even with a large-scale reduction in grain production, substantial grain exports were still maintained. On the other hand, India, as the largest country in South Asia, has a land area of 2.98 million square kilometers. Among them, the cultivated land area reaches 156 million hectares, which is 1.56 million square kilometers, accounting for 52% of the land area, ranking second in the world after the United States with 158 million hectares. Most areas in India have a tropical climate, with average annual precipitation above 1,000 millimeters and average annual temperature remaining at around 22 degrees Celsius. There is plenty of sunshine, which is very suitable for growing crops. Many rice crops can be harvested three times a year, which also gives them the confidence to export in large quantities. On the other hand, although China's planting area is not as large as that of India, its output is much higher than India's grain output. According to data released by the National Bureau of Statistics of China, China's total grain output will reach 686 million tons in 2022, and per capita grain possession will be 483.5 kilograms. If we look at it this way, there must be enough food to eat. But what is confusing is why India can still become an important global food exporter when its food production is lower than that of China. Behind this, there are several key factors worthy of attention. India, an ancient and diverse country, presents a significant gap between rich and poor in its socio-economic structure. This gap not only affects the country's internal development, but also shapes its external food export strategy to some extent. 
And when we try to explore why India can still maintain a large amount of food exports in the face of a huge hungry population, this gap between rich and poor and external market demand are undoubtedly the core driving factors. There is a huge income gap in India's socio-economic landscape. The differences in income levels and quality of life between urban and rural areas, industrialized areas and agricultural areas are extremely obvious. This gap has caused a large amount of agricultural products to flow to cities and foreign markets that can pay higher prices, leaving far less in rural and low-income areas. In this situation, many low-income families are often forced to sell the food they have in order to maintain their basic livelihood, even if it means they will face more serious hunger problems. Wealthy households and business entities in India are hoarding huge amounts of food. This is not only because they have greater spending power, but also because they see opportunities to make economic profits through grain exports. The appeal of this export is even more obvious when the international market has continued demand for certain Indian-specific grain varieties such as basmati rice. From the perspective of external demand, India's grain has certain competitiveness in the international market. On the one hand, India's relatively low production costs give it a price advantage. On the other hand, its unique types of grains, such as basmati rice, meet the tastes and diverse needs of foreign consumers, making Indian grains popular in the international market. But that doesn't mean India's food exports haven't faced criticism. Many domestic and foreign observers and social activists have expressed concern that India still maintains large amounts of food exports in the face of huge domestic hunger problems. They believe that India should pay more attention to its domestic food security issues rather than excessive pursuit of economic profits. However, behind this complex problem, there are not only internal factors in Indian society, such as the gap between rich and poor, backwardness in policy formulation and agricultural technology, but also the huge attraction of the external market. This makes India face huge pressure and challenges in terms of grain exports. How to balance domestic demand and the temptation of the external market will be a problem that India needs to think deeply about and solve in the future. China's grain production is higher than that of India, but it still spends tens of billions of dollars every year to import grain. It even occupies the position of the largest food importing country in the world. Why is this? Although overall, China has already achieved self-sufficiency in the supply of rice, wheat and other grains. But structurally, the shortage of some agricultural products such as soybeans and corn is still a problem. China's total grain imports in 2022 will be approximately 147 million tons, including soybeans, corn, wheat, barley, sorghum, rice, etc. Among them, 91.08 million tons of soybeans, 20.62 million tons of corn, 9.96 million tons of wheat and 6.19 million tons of rice were imported. Soybeans here are mainly used as raw materials for grain and oil, and the remainder is used to feed pigs, cattle and sheep to maintain the development of animal husbandry. Among these imported wheat and rice, most of them are strong gluten and weak gluten wheat and Thai rice. The purpose is to meet people's diversified consumption needs and make people not only full but also eat well. As for the grain produced in China, most of it is used as grain reserves to meet emergency needs. When it comes to food issues, India and China have shown completely different strategies and phenomena. China focuses on self-sufficiency, while India uses its abundant arable land resources to carry out foreign trade as a support for economic growth. 
Behind this difference are not only economic and political factors, but also cultural and social differences. When facing the problem of global food security, all countries should formulate reasonable strategies based on their own national conditions to achieve sustainable development. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.